it's not too often that a, uh, a little feature or tip sneaks behind me inside a Lightroom. I've been using it for a while and I wish I could say this one was brand new, but it's not. I think it's been around for years. I even answered somebody's question wrong, but it's a masking trick and I'll explain it more inside the video. You'll understand uh, why and where you could need it. Speaking of masking and this tip actually becomes even more valuable. There's a little free preset in the link below these new landscape segmenting masks that Adobe's created. Uh, they don't have a one click way to create all of them. So I've got a little freebie for you if you want to do that, but let's take a look at the tip. I am gonna do this inside of the develop module inside of Lightroom Classic. If you look the masking panel over here, it's exactly the same and this tip is exactly the same for Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Now, we have to we have to set this one up a little bit. You have to understand you know, why you would use it because I, I think, I, I don't wanna confuse anybody to thinking this is something you should use all the time. But if you're using anything along the lines of something that might automatically create masks for you, Okay, so that would fall into the category of the new landscape masks. And that would also fall into the category of possibly, I'll go to a different photo here, of possibly people masks, okay? And it most typically, it's, it's gonna, it, it's gonna, you're gonna have a need for this, or you're gonna see a need for this if you're to use presets. So let's say I go to my landscape ones here. I've got these new scene split ones, which I talked about. You can, uh, in fact, you can check the link because creating all the landscape masks could be cumbersome. I put a, a little freebie before below there in the, the link that'll help you get that preset to do it for you. But let's say you create a bunch of masks here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna create all possible masks for the landscape. And then that would hold true. I'm gonna switch over to a portrait photo here. And I've actually got some portrait presets. So I've got presets that do, you know, I'll just do another all masks one here. That's gonna create all the different masks for you. And so it creates all masks for you. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to need those masks for that specific photo. So on a photo like this, you can see the little exclamation point on some of these masks, architecture, vegetation and artificial ground. And that's essentially telling you that feature doesn't exist here. That's what the little exclamation point means. So rather than having to leave these in the masks and you could say, well, why not just leave them? It doesn't hurt anything. It actually does, masks can slow Lightroom and Photoshop down. So what you can do is come to this pop-out menu and just go down here. You can see delete empty mask, but you can see there's an option for delete all empty masks. So you can click on that and that gets rid of all the empty masks. Unfortunately, it's not something that I could put into a preset. So if you were to use my all masks uh, preset here for those scene split uh, landscape presets that I talked to you about, if you'd use that one, uh, there's no way I can include that in on the preset, something you have to do manually. But again, maybe you're using a preset, like I've got one here in my preset pack called all masks landscape that's automatically going to edit the photo for you. It's a great it's a great preset. It does a lot of things for you, but again, it leaves these empty masks here. So you can just come over to that pop-out menu. Little side note, when you click on a mask, that's when it exposes the add and the subtract buttons down here. A lot of people don't, don't see that. They think that their buttons aren't there. You have to click on the mask. And this, again, same thing in Lightroom and Camera Raw. But uh, a little tip for you here is don't go, don't go to the little, the little sub mask inside of there and click on it because it's not there. That's just for that particular mask. You want to make sure you go, if you were to think of it as parent child, go to the top level parent mask and click on delete all empty masks. That'll delete it for you and help keep things nice and tidy inside of your masking panel. Speaking of nice and tidy, you've got to check out my, that's not a not a good segue, but you've got to check out my scene split uh, presets and mini course. They take advantage of these new landscape segmenting masks that Adobe came out. So whether, if you're a preset user, great. The, you'll love the presets because they, they automatically do so many things for you, but I hope you take advantage of the mini course because you move beyond presets, you have to understand these masks. To me, they, they are the most, they're the biggest change that I've seen from Adobe really in the last four years. As an outdoor photographer, it's not just landscapes, it is any scene that is outside, you have to be using these because they do, they do what we're trying to usually do with masking and we're usually trying to do it manually and they do it automatically for us and then allow us to get to the creative stuff faster. We don't wanna do the grunt work of making the masks 
Adobe does that, but they let us get to the creative stuff faster. So I do hope you'll swing by and check out that course. Very, very affordable. Uh, it's on sale now, and I think it'll get you through that learning curve uh, to really help take advantage of using these masks that I think are a must have feature. Speaking of, if you're not sure of what I'm even talking about here, um, I've got a video for you that you can check out where I went into what the new feature is. I uh, showed you lots of different examples for it, and it can really kind of get you going on that path to understanding what they do.